uh, time to get the Cats back on track here. They've played better in their last two games at home against lesser opponents. It's a pretty good Rutgers team they're going to play here today. Tell you what, man. What more could you ask for? Absolutely beautiful. Great day for football. Still the coldest day that Ryan Helensky has ever played football. Yes. 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 Let's go. Why do we work so hard? Why do you guys sacrifice so much? Why do you give everything to the guy to your right and your left? For this window, we're about to go experience. So just trust it, man. Get your eyes right. Play fundamentally sound football, but more importantly, have fun. We're running out of time together. So there's no time like right now. Jerry shifts to the left side of that offensive line. The snap to Yelinski. He'll keep it and throw over the middle. Caught. Washington to the 45 to the 40. Breaks free. He's to the 35 30. He's to the 20. He's to the 10. Malik Washington to the house. Touchdown. Hey, hey, hey. That's it right there. Hey, boy. That's all day. That's all day. All day. All right, I'm not gonna have to belabor the point, am I? We, I think we all know where we're at. I think we all know what we're capable of becoming, all right? It's not who's gonna embrace it. And all that matters is where we're at right now moving forward. And so we've gotta to commit to practicing our ass off. So what do we gotta prepare for tomorrow? Base install into the game plan. Get your body back today, get your mind right. And show it up ready to improve tomorrow. All right, Tuesdays are tough by design. They're tough physically, but I think they're twice as hard mentally because we got game plan going in, nuances going in, and we got to restart the motor going into a new week. Okay? All right, let's have a great week. All right, let's go. Days after beating Ohio to even their record at 2-2, two and two, the Wildcats now face their toughest task of the young season with a trip to Lincoln and a road showdown with the Huskers. Eight of the ten meetings between these teams have been decided by just one score. Northwestern knows all too well the environment they'll be walking into for homecoming at Memorial Stadium. And the offense prepares for the impending noise with one last walkthrough at the team hotel. And here tonight at Storied Memorial Stadium, the Wildcats will look to pick up their first Big Ten win of the year and begin defense of their Big Ten West Championship as they beat the Cornhuskers in Big Ten play for the 11th year in a row. It is homecoming here in Lincoln, a sellout crowd expected. Nothing unusual about that. Now, Ted is going to be a different experience. They haven't played in front of the crowd anything like what they're going to see tonight. Well, they're going to get a handful of 90,000 people tonight. And when you think about some of the great cathedrals of college football, this has got to be in the top 10 for sure. It's an amazing place. And then you add to that, this is a night game. This is, that adds to the electricity to it. Big 10 football in prime time from Lincoln. Sit back and enjoy the Wildcats and the Huskers. And away we go from Lincoln. They haven't had a third and long until now. Third down and 10. Martinez one hands the snap, takes it right. Martinez, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. He one handed the snap, and he's got his third touchdown here in the first quarter. It is 20 to nothing in another nightmarish first quarter for the Wildcats. They've been here before, but this crowd is savoring every minute of it. Oh, hello. 
Gretzky. And this is Claire. And Claire. Yeah, Claire says, Welcome to the party. Gretzky the Cats. Makes the give. Here comes a blitz. Now he throws it down the right sideline. Robinson over the shoulder catch and out of bounds. 32 yards to the 28. Snap to Helinski. Helinski winds up. Got a man wide open right side. Touchdown. Touchdown again. Stefan Robinson Jr. on back to back plays. 32 yards. On the first one, this one for the touchdown, 28 yards, and the Wildcats are on the board with a minute 37 to go in the first. Ryan Helinski, 8 of 11 for 100 yards, and a touchdown. His first touchdown pass as a Wildcat. Despite the response, the Wildcat offense had an uphill climb that got steeper with every Husker possession. And time was not on their side. It's Johnson. Johnson powers his way to the end zone. Touchdown, Nebraska. Either he's getting you out or he's coming around. Holinski goes back in the air, hits Washington, first down, Northwestern. Holinski throws, and that is a wonderful catch made. It's one ball is out. It's loose. It's recovered by Nebraska. The red zone turnover stopped all the Northwestern momentum. And hope for a comeback quickly faded as the second half clock ticked away to its disappointing conclusion. Easy. That's a good football play. Huskers celebrate a resounding win. Here's the final second. Ticks off the clock. It's all over. And Nebraska wins it 56 to 7. Right across, road boys. There's two ways this thing can go. I said this to the defense 10% of life is what happens, 90% is how we can respond. It's on us, and everyone in this room, left or your right, do it for them. Do it for the f***ing seniors, man. It's us, man. I'll f***ing die for each and every one of you, and I'm going to the next seven weeks. All right? And the Wildcats have a rare break in the schedule. The bye week allows players and staff a chance to catch up on life beyond the playing field, or at least beyond football. What's up, Mo? You can say hey, bro. What's going on? How are you doing? No, you're good, bro. You doing good? All right, man. Come on. Dang. Stefan! For Ryan Halinski, it's a chance to meet with fellow founders and contributors of Uncut, a platform for Northwestern student athletes to share their stories. His recently published essay hopes to destigmatize mental health through his own personal experience. Everything good? Yeah, all well. I've been talking about mental health for a while now. I mean, obviously, Tyler passed my junior year of high school after my junior year of football of high school, so. The response that I got 
after talking about my story and stuff, it's still ongoing. Like the amount of people that are connected by suicide, struggling with suicide, somebody else struggling with suicide. It's, there's, it's almost like one in every three people, you know what I'm saying? And it's just crazy to think about, but I'm glad we're doing it. Yeah, how did you feel about like the response you got? Like, yeah. I was, I was honestly scared about it at first. I'm just glad we're talking about it. I mean, like, cause we did Helensky's Hope stuff at South Carolina, but here, like when Coach Fitz, like got up in front of the team and told us yeah. about holding three fingers in the third quarter and then actually seeing everybody do it even before I did it, it was like, okay, this is pretty sweet. Helensky lost his brother Tyler to suicide in 2018. The number three, his jersey number, serves as a symbol for promoting awareness and education of mental health for student athletes. That definitely in this generation, I feel like that's something that's frowned upon if you talk about stuff, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like just keeping all your, or putting all your anxieties, not all of them per se, but all your struggles and stuff out there into the world, people would look at you differently. But I just think the most important part is I don't want to make it about me and our family and Tyler, yeah. which I I want everybody to know Tyler's story and yeah. his name, name to live on forever, but I want it to be more of like, it's mental health. Let's lead by what we choose to do individually. Let's lead on this campus by what we choose to do collectively. Let's lead in society by who you men are, by how you're willing to give and how we're willing to look after each other, not some of the time, but all the time. And the way we look after our community. That's what wildcat men do, okay? But take a second today when you got your free time and you get right with the one you get right with. Right. Hello. Hello. What up? What's good? What's good? Oh my good, you did clean, bro. This is our sign. <laughs> Basically, step one, get sleep. Step two, wake up. Step three, hug me, brother, because he got here. I wasn't going to see him as a practice. Step four, say goodbye to the parents. Step, final step, rage. Push for platinum. <laughs> Race for diamond, achieve master. It's a game. We, we play Apex, so. Not very well. Yeah, we're, we're not going to get there. It's homecoming week on the campus of Northwestern, and as preparations are made for visiting Rutgers, a special group of Wildcats are back in Evanston to celebrate the anniversary of the 1995 and 96 seasons. They've gathered at Walter Athletic Center in Ryan Fieldhouse for their first look at the state-of-the-art facility. Yes. What do you want me to watch? Yeah. Okay. Isn't it cool? Look at the technology. Oh, look at that. DR, Dwayne Bates. Look at that. January 1st, 1996. Among those on the tour is former defensive back Chris Martin and his family. Say, give him the deuce. He's filming you. Give him the peace, huh? Give him that Tyreek Hill. <laughs> Cheetah. Yeah. What's up, man? Hey, he said, this is daddy's roommate. One of his best teammates. Mr. Will, yeah, he's been watching. I don't think there's a nicer facility in the country. And then you bring recruits and they can see right down the skyline downtown Chicago. If you can get them over here, you got a good chance of getting them, that's for sure. They can take this in. The facility on the shores of Lake Michigan likely wouldn't be here today without the unprecedented success of those teams from the mid-90s. The stark differences between what existed then and what is here now is not lost on these Wildcats. No, none of this was we had when we were here 92 through 96. But I was saying earlier, it's amazing what winning does. First man, winning. whoever gets their hands inside wins. Get them in, get your hands, get your hands in here. And he snap, snap your hips through. And he was literally like, you know how you pick up a chair? He, he just picked me up. Oh, the, all, the, all the battles, all the battles. Yeah. 
All right, so we stole this idea from the Yankees. We played the pinstripe ball. When you walk into the Yankees locker room in the Bronx, there's a big NY, and all the players signed the wall that came back to the locker room. So that was the thought process oh, behind cool. it. So enjoy it. Have fun tonight. All right, enjoy tonight. We'll see you in the game. We'll, we'll get you in the locker room. Hopefully after the game, we'll see you in the fight zone together, all right? Yeah, sure. Love you guys, man. Great coaches. Great to see you guys, too. What an honor. Pretty cool. Pretty cool, pretty cool indeed. Hey, let's go, boys. Come on. Did you see that over there? The evening would not be complete without an address for the man who promised to bring the purple to Pasadena. I've been asked to say a few words. Most of you know I don't have just a few words, but uh, I hope that every one of you especially today after the tour of that building and being in this building, understand what a contribution you have made to this university. What's happened down there has made this a legitimate Big Ten program. I'm so proud of you guys. And I'm for you to come here when you did, when <laughs> it was tough. We know it was tough. And to do it, with what we had. It can only have been done because there was just great resolve, stability, good people, and um, that's what you are. I can't wait to walk there out on that field with you guys again tomorrow. Man, is that gonna be fun. Thanks. Western is playing for the first time in two weeks. Rutgers has lost three straight games. They're three and three. Northwestern is two and three and trying to put the pain of a big loss to Nebraska behind them. They've done a lot of work during the bye week. Pat Fitzgerald said, now let's see how it's applied at 11 a.m. on Saturday. Up a big arm. He sees the field. He's getting better with this offense. He's learning the offense as he goes. But I think they've settled into him being the guy. They play fake it to him and going for the long pass. And down the field inside the 30 yard line. So we trust our defense. We think our defense can handle your offense any place on the field. Let's go, D. Get off! Go get it! Go get it! Bad run on a quarterback draw, he's hit, and a tunnel on the boy! Olinsky back to the end zone, dances left, throws up in the middle, got Robinson at the 20, to the 25, and out near the 30-yard line. And this is the offensive great in the line for J.P. and Dream. The will the pass on second and short, it's a quick attack on the lead, Washington, and Washington, racing to score! This is a really good uh, college football player, Chris Burke. Good instincts, gets to the football, plays with great intensity, fun to watch. He leads the Big Ten in tackles per game, and Northwestern's defense holds when his drive started at the 42. Yeah, they, they can't generate any kind of a pass game past five yards. That's going to be a major problem. This whole game comes down to which offensive line plays better. With the score, Northwestern 7, Rutgers 0. The Wildcat offensive line kept Helinski clean for the duration of the game. And the other side of the ball had no intention of slowing down. You guys got to rush your asses off, okay? Because he's, I'm telling you guys right now, he's, he's looking to fake it. He's looking to and run on you Bedro under pressure, hit, and he's sacked by Bryce Gallagher. Northwestern outgained Rutgers by a 4-1 to one margin in the first quarter, and the Scarlet Knights weren't going to stay off the board for long. And on the back line of the end zone, Touchdown. Stout makes the catch. 
kick is good. The score, Northwestern 7, Rutgers 7. Blinsky's had himself a really nice day here. He has had enjoyed nice uh, protection. He scans the field very well, been accurate with the football. Good day for him. Cats start for their own 14. Evan Hull back in a running back, two receivers left, one of the right. Hull gets the handoff, skips his way outside, 15-20, and dragged out from behind. Now it's third and 17 for the Wildcats. Snap to Hilinski, rolls to the right. Hilinski still looking, now throwing, and caught by Robinson. What a great throw and catch. There's Claire and Claire. Angling right, 35-40 to midfield. Still on his feet and out inside the 45. On the right boundary, best running play of the day for the Wildcats. Here's Helensky, play fake. Helensky looking over the middle. Jefferson, 35 to the 30. Still on his feet, 25 far boundary. And fights down inside the 20. Welcome back, J.J. Jefferson. First and goal at the two. Helensky is going to throw to the right side. Hot touchdown. Marshall Lang, who was in as the blocker for Evan Hull, caught it around the one and took a step into the end zone for his second touchdown, and the Wildcats go back in front with 3.15 to go to the half. Ryan Halinski with a second touchdown pass of the game. It's been a while since the Wildcats have been in this position and holding a team to just seven points here in the first half. The seven points would be all that the Wildcats would allow, as the defense had eyes everywhere with the Scarlet Knights going nowhere. Drill being pushed out of the pocket, tries to run, and he's twisted down. Trevor Kent, the veteran defensive lineman for Pittsburgh, Kansas. Back to the freshman, Simon Pocket collapsing. He's sacked, sacked by Sam Duke Miller. And the Wildcats take over on downs with 3.51 to go. And that's where we're away from Trevor Kent. One more for that, it's on the other way. Northwestern had a lot to smile about on this homecoming weekend. and sent the Wildcat faithful home with another score to secure the win. Fake by Hilinski, throws left flat, caught by Hull, spins out of a tackle. 35-30, got a first down in the gun, brings Robinson in motion. Hands it off, Claire, straight ahead from the goal line, touchdown! Andrew Claire, his first touchdown as a Wildcat. Did exactly what they needed to do, right? But the biggest thing that they did was they got a little confidence moved over to their side of the ball again. That's a wrap, got the dub. On the Michigan, let's run. Let's go. One at a time.